Amelia Island 2023 recap. Uh, what I what I loved about Amelia Island, for the most part this time, was not having to write auction reports and having a child that could actually walk, you know, that's reasonably sociable and getting to show her everything. So it's a great experience if you're a parent and you bring your child there because your child gets to see the whole thing for the first time in a way where she's not just crawling around in the grass, smiling at people, you know. This is more interesting where she's actually looking at cars, taking it in, starting to see that there are different types of cars, that there are old cars and modern cars. So this is step one of indoctrinating little Madeline into becoming uh, her father's daughter, you know. Um, so, good crowd. I. I found that Haggerty did a pretty good job managing the event this year. There were no mobs. Nobody seemed to be angry. Everybody's expectations seemed to be met. Had to get there early to get free parking. Cars and coffee or cars and community because there's really not that much coffee there. So I can understand the cars and community part. Still not free. Even though I have eight or nine cars on my Haggerty policy now. Uh, so that's still something that I wish they would change. I wish they would give me some kind of discount of the event because I pay so much in insurance every year. You know, I'm one of their best customers. I'm literally funding this purchase of the Amelia Island Concours if you want to look at it that way. So the next thing that uh, I wanted to discuss was MBCA and Mercedes presence. Now I'm sure if you're from MBCA and you're watching this, you're plugging your ears and saying, oh man, I was hoping you wouldn't discuss this part, but you know, it's all here and there, you know, first of all, there's very little Mercedes presence on the field at cars and community. And this is really disappointing because of all the classic foreign cars out there, Mercedes are pretty much the most numerous. I know some people think that their cars are more numerous. There are more numerous Mercedes. In fact, you'd see more Mercedes parked on the side of the road and in parking lots than you would at the actual event itself. During the event, I saw a 190 SL that was presented by Bud's Benz. It was a nice car. They had done good work on it. The owner had requested they put Weber carburetors on it. So obviously it had to be trailered to the show field because it probably didn't run all that well. Um, there were uh, a slew of 500Es and E500s at the Radwood event, which I did not attend. Uh, and then at the Concours de Le Mans, somebody had a 300D long wheelbase that they utterly destroyed, which, you know, if you want a great family car and you don't want a minivan, you could buy a Mercedes 300D long wheelbase. So the guy who had it, I mean, I could see that his intentions were good, but he really didn't appreciate or understand the car. You know, I know guys that have put their blood, sweat, and tears into restoring long wheelbase 123s because they're so unusual. So he was even, this gentleman was even surprised that his SLS worked and didn't know it existed. And of course the car had the compulsory hole cut in the hood because he couldn't fix the vacuum shutoff system. So, you know, it, it, it's like, if we're going to celebrate classic cars, let's not bleep them up or destroy them. You know, let's try to improve the car as we go instead of unimprove the car as we go. Or you're going to be the car's last owner. Now, I, I reserved a special part of this video to discuss MBCA and what I think they should be doing, what I don't think they're doing right. Here's what Here's what they did right, first of all. So I have to give Jim Roberts from the Alabama section credit for, again, organizing an event at the Double Tree by the Jacksonville Airport for all of the MBCA people to attend and, uh, you know, get together and sort of celebrate the event. This is good. It's good to eat together. It's good to talk together. If you're, you know, if you're traveling up there by yourself, it's nice to have a group to welcome you, which I really appreciated. But because of all the traffic, getting from the Jacksonville Airport to Yulee, is through Yuli and do um, Fernandina Beach where the concourse is, is really quite hard. Uh, I am 
I think that MBCA needs to find a way to host an event on or around or in the cars and community. Now, I'm going to say this for national, okay? This includes you, Doug, because I know you're watching. If you can't get a human being to make contact with Haggerty and allocate some kind of space and parking for Mercedes, then again, this is another failure on the part of NBCA. You need to have a representative from the club. You have so many people in leadership that don't do anything, you know? Like, you know, there's a ex-president who lives in Texas that loves to run his mouth about himself, but can't call up somebody at Haggerty and say, hi, I'm the most charming guy on the planet. Can you get us a car display like we used to have? This is what I don't understand. Work with the Mercedes-Benz Club. Now, on some part, I think Haggerty has an issue with this too, because it seems like they're not being as inclusive of the car clubs. It's like, guys, work with the freaking car clubs so that you don't end up just you know, having a bunch of cars in the field. Most people like to see the cars organized into different groups. That helps us connect with our friends and see their progress and their cars and see what they brought, you know. Number two, NBCA needs to focus on making this a classic car of it. Nobody wants to go there and see a bunch of new cars, you know. I think, unfortunately, the average NBCA owner now just goes to the dealership every three or four years and buys a new car and likes to sit down at dinner and talk about it. This isn't really what I signed up for. It doesn't excite me. You know, it doesn't excite a lot of us, which is why so many of us are wondering what happened to our club in general. I think the third thing is that it's nice that it's really great that Jim from Alabama brought, brought out the big guns, but the Central Florida sections, the, the f sections in Florida should be working together to have an event. I'm not saying that I wouldn't want to help. I mean, if you're from a section in Florida and you want to have an event at Amelia Island, call me. I'll help. You know, I'll get people to show up and bring their car. I mean, I'm actually baking these things. You know, if you want to have a cookie party, call the baker, you know. Um, <laughs> but I, what I'm saying is, like, this is, a, this is the biggest classic car event in Florida. And you can't even do this, you know, but the the regional director in Florida resigned recently and nobody wants the job. You know, I thought about taking the job, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to take a job where I'm not going to have any volunteers either. It's a vicious cycle. So what do we do? I guess we just go for the fun of it and hope the event organizes itself in the future. But I know a lot of the younger guys that have tried to step up into leadership positions at NBCA, they end up doing everything by themselves and they have families and jobs and stuff. I mean, we need retired people with lots of energy. You know, we need the, the Bill Smith who ran a, you know, ran a department at IBM for 25 years and then did an overseas thing for another 30 years and then retired at the age of 70 and has a permanent bend in his back from sitting over a computer all day that seems to have boundless amounts of energy as long as you're pouring coffee in his mouth. It's like we need those guys to organize something in Amelia Island for his cars, for, for these cars, you know. Um, I am not saying that I'm giving up on NBCA and their presence at Amelia Island, but I mean, you know, I didn't drive my 300 TD up there for nothing, you know. It's like, I like having camaraderie with Mercedes owners. Like, give me something, you know. Okay, so enough rambling. And overall, I had a great time. I appreciate those of you that came up and said hi and told me you were watching the channel. We were really grateful for everything. I want to give my shout out to Patrick, for example, in New Orleans, who's got a 560 SEL he's rehabbing and... um you know, that was that was one subscriber that who's who made a lasting impression, so I was happy to talk to him. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please like, sh share, and subscribe. And, you know, if you're from Haggerty and you're watching this, we need Mercedes presence there. We're the most amazing, we, we own the most amazing cars ever produced. You know, they just, nothing stops them except lack of engagement. So, please help us. We'll talk to you in the future.